What is up, everyone? Welcome to Max on Deck. It is Wednesday, and today we are joined by Courtney, aka Miss Stray Chroma. How you doing? I'm doing good. Uh, I'm still kind of nervous, but I'm very excited to be here. And uh, yeah, I'm here to talk about keyboards and and, and junk. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. Hell yeah. So guys, if you haven't seen Stray Chroma, <clears throat> I I was actually uh basic builds introduce me to her um uh, i do try and roam twitch for the keyboard streamers but i know cyrus you knew her from like gaming um so but uh yeah a key a game a game a gamer a, a gaming streamer as well as a keyboard streamer we don't have too many of those um so awesome to see and i love the pink background Rock. oh thank you i feel everything out. Everything on my stream must be pink. Everything must be cute <laughs> and functional. <laughs> need nice. to get you a need to get you a pink microphone now. Oh. Or at Don't least like a like a little pink uh uh cover to put over the the mic. So just I'm a sure little bit. Make. Yeah, I feel like I know that Razer has a pink microphone and I've been very tempted, but I've had this mic for years, so can't can't let it go just yet. For sure, for sure. All right. Well, in, in thirty seconds, I found a pink mic filter. So yeah. Ooh, yeah. Like you gotta link me. <laughs> <laughs> so this says red, but uh, a couple of them are pink. But guys, if you haven't uh, hit exclamation point guest, uh, it'll take you to a link to her Twitch. She is not live right now, obviously. But uh, check out her stream. I uh, was in her stream yesterday and watching it. Uh, fantastic keyboard streamer. Uh, and if you like the color pink. Uh, every- literally every she's she's not wrong everything's pink uh so welcome to the stream yeah thank you guys again i'm very i'm honored to be here really uh well thank you we appreciate that uh before we get started quick shout out to our awesome sponsors switchmod.net the dixie mech canon keys and project keyboards as well as our awesome partners uh zap cables smith and rune and type beast we will hear more from them later we typically like to start these streams out with a fast four. Um, so first question, top four favorite switches. Uh, okay. Get her on ink blacks, uh, alpacas, get her on clears and uh, bobas right now. I haven't had a chance right. to try bobas yet. I still need to try them. I feel like I'm behind on the, trying of new switches you and i used to be really on top of that and then it's like we, we settled and we got we comfortable yeah. <laughs> i'm still trying a lot of switches like bobas are actually my first tactile switch in a while so i feel like now chewy and i we're like the, the keyboard boomers all right we're <laughs> boomers. like what's your favorite switch i'm like huh holy pandas <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but next up will be your top four favorite key sets. Oh, okay. Number one. Okay, may- maybe no particular order, but Cat Milkshake, uh, DSA Magic Girl, DSA Astrala Keys, and uh, it's a really old set. Uh, DSA Eevee by Signature Plastics. I'm going to have to look that one up. <laughs> That was my first uh, custom key set, so that's like has a soft spot in my heart. Yeah, I know. Uh, Keep noob in chat. She's a a big fan of Astralo keys. It's such a cool looking set. I remember I I think I sent it to Chewy when it like first released, and I was like, dude, this is kind of dope. It's like a yeah, big it's so kit. colorful. Yeah, yeah, and great. DSA. I, I think you can notice a pattern. Like I I like DSA as my favorite pro- key prep profile. Uh, and I like the customizability, like not having to worry about like the rows or anything is really nice. Mm-hmm. You think one day you'll make a, a play to try to get some DSA milkshake? Oh, uh, my heart hurts that I can't get DSA milkshake. Like it's right. so rare. I, I keep an eye on like mech market and maybe there's one post every six months saying that, you know, I've got half a base kit here. All right. Well, chat, we got to get to get her some DSA milkshake. Please. You know, I- we, you and I tried, you and I both tried DSA for a while because I had Honeywell and I know you had um, Pulse. Pulse. Um, and I tried it. I just could never get behind it. 
Uh, I guess I think it was just it was too flat for me. I was like, oh, that's like oh, that's why I don't like cat either. Because they're like, oh, it's it's kind of flattened out. I'm like, yeah. Uh, uh. Well, I like them skull, but well, it's funny. But I also hate MT3. <laughs> it's like every I need every I need it right there in the middle. I need some skull. So, but uh, next up is your top four favorite keyboards. Oh, okay. Does it have to be ones I own, or no, no, no? no. Okay, just I like- mean, you can, you can make whatever rules you would like. Okay. Uh. Huh. Okay. Uh, Satisfaction seventy five. But I miss I miss the last one, so I'm, I'm kind of sad. Um, everyone knows that I'm like the biggest fan of like I do Bow's keyboard, so like the ID80 is like literally the keyboard that lives on my desk. Um, I'm really enjoying the the keyboard I recently built too. This is the Switch Critter Alice, mm-hmm. and it's my first stacked acrylic board, and I've been like obsessed with it as well. And then. Uh, and this is this is kind of a weird one, but probably the poker too. It's just kind of a, it's a pre-built board, but it's what got me into the, like, enthusiast hobby. So, again, it has a soft spot in my heart. That that nostalgia. Yeah. yeah I, I do like the layout of the ID80. Like, it's a cool, like, 75%, but then it's, like, kind of not, but, like, kind of is. Like, I really like the, um, like the right arrow, arrow keys being, like, separated. Like, that's the, yeah. the big thing for me. I can't handle like a squash 75% layout. I think it's a, it's too crowded looking. Yeah. This is, this is pretty dope layout. They've got cool colors too. The like red Mm -hmm. colors, like a, almost like a burgundy looks pretty sweet. And then I like the gold, the one that you have, Courtney, that white, it looks great. Yeah. It's a great budget option as well. Like it's, it's an integrated plate, which is how it, it keeps down the cost. But Honestly, I, I think that with like a lot of foam and stuff, I've gotten it to sound pretty good. And it's a pretty inexpensive keyboard with this layout in particular. Like I don't see anything else in this price range that really competes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 140 for everything. Yeah, it's and kind with, of insane. With whatever, depending on your switches, it's 200 for a build without caps, which is mm-hmm. hard to come by these days, yeah. especially good ones. Um, you know, we, we t- I've t- actually had this conversation uh, these conversations a few times about like you know we'll save that conversation for later okay all right. <laughs> um, but, uh, the the last one or sorry that was your top four keyboards my keyboards, I got yeah. so yeah mr uh, osiris has the, the yeah, last final four. the final one the one that's not about keyboards uh but it's about food what are your top four favorite foods oh shit um Okay, I have to say pho is one of them. And then there's another Vietnamese dish. It's called uh, tit ca. It's basically like a like a braised pork dish. Uh, there's that. Oh, man. I, I don't want to think about food because Thanksgiving just passed. <laughs> like, uh, I'm going to say green tea Kit Kats. Does that count? Like, it's a candy, but... But uh, it's all the those time. I haven't had those in a while. I haven't ordered from Zeal in a hot minute, so I haven't had those in a while. Oh. <laughs> and then my last one. Maybe like pork dumplings or something like that. Yeah, I'll, I'll say pork dumplings. Nice. Yeah, I think uh, we had when we had Upas on, he did like all desserts. So <laughs> the cats are not not off limits there for that one. So absolutely. Uh, also, that red is called um, brandy red. Ooh. So, double points for Osiris on the on Bates, that. Bates. Um, so, uh, how you know? I don't know a whole lot about you or your keyboard journey. So, how did you get into keyboards? I know, I know a little bit that it started with a poker. Um, but uh, how did you get into keyboards and when? Uh, okay, so. You guys mentioned, like, I also do games, uh, game streams, and I originally started on Twitch as a Overwatch and Rainbow Six Siege uh, streamer. But before that, I used to play a game, as a rhythm game called Osu. And uh, with Osu, I think at the time it was, like, 2015 or 2016. Like, I was still in high school. And, uh, like, the top players at the time, they were like, oh, I have, like, these Cherry MX Red switches that make it, you know, they're super smooth, so you can hit all these streams really fast. And I was like, oh, I want to do that. 
because I was really, really into Osu at that time. So I, I bought a, actually, the Poker 2 is not my first keyboard. It, the first keyboard I bought was like a Corsair K65 back when Cherry had like their exclusive RGB housing deal with with Corsair. Like it was like only them that provided it. So I was like super RGB gaming keyboard that got me into it. And then uh, I looked more into just like keyboards in general and I found the mechanical keyboard subreddit. And then there it was like, oh shit, there's like this huge rabbit hole. Um, and that led me to buying like my first enthusiast keyboard, which was my poker too. Um, and then I, I was kind of part of the hobby yeah, for, you know, anywhere between 2015 and like 2017, but then I got into college and I got kind of busy and I kind of bought what I thought was like end game for me at that time. Like, uh, I think it was like a Vermillo keyboard or something that I was happy with and I just didn't pursue it further. Right. And then, uh, the, obviously 2020 has been crazy and coronavirus you know make i i haven't been really doing anything aside from you know just being indoors and i was looking i don't know i kind of just fell back into the rabbit hole of mechanical keyboards uh i think what did it for me was there was this like instagram post with with cat milkshake on it and i was like that's a that's a mechanical keyboard i know i know a little bit of like mechanical keyboards let me let me pursue this further and, and see what has changed in i think maybe three years that i've been gone from the hobby um, and then I, I, I go back into the mechanical keyboard subreddit and I'm like, holy shit, there's so much more now than there was when I was just kind of a baby enthusiast back in 2015. And, um, that got me looking into like custom keyboards. And also at the same time, like during quarantine, I was kind of looking for something to do with my, my spare time. And I was like, well, I used to stream games, right? So maybe my newfound interest in mechanical keyboards, I can combine that with my previous streamer experience. And, and that's kind of like what has led me to, uh, to coming back to Twitch uh, and making, you know, keyboard content and uh, mechanical keyboard builds. Nice. Boom. Also, Lux Cables, what's up, dude? And thank you, Keep Noob, for the eight months sub. Yeah. And thank you for being an awesome moderator. Appreciate that. And so how long have you been uh, streaming like builds and stuff? Uh, oh, I feel like I've not been streaming for too long. So like, I've been on Twitch for, I think my, my Twitch said like 37 months. So I've been on the platform for a super long time, but I didn't start streaming mechanical keyboard stuff until like September of this year. It might've been September or like late August, but it's only been a couple of months. Yeah, I'm trying to look, look through my VOD, but I'm pretty sure like September is like where I'd, where I'd place it. Awesome. It's always like a, a big dive in, and I'm sure you've seen this with like the gear and stuff. You end up like, like everything that you have, like all the money goes in. You're like, I want to buy keyboard stuff, but I also want to buy stream stuff. It's like, how do I, how do I make do this I, work? Uh, yeah, I, honestly, when I was making the decision to like extreme keyboard content, like I was talking, I was talking about this with my friends and we're just like, is this a good idea? Like, there's so much like initial investment cost for me to get like uh, mechanical keyboard content going. And I just didn't know if it was going to be worth it. Um, and to my surprise, with how like supportive the community is, and like how I don't know, just like how fast things have been moving, like it has it has kind of worked out in my favor. And I felt like I, I kind of took a risk on myself, which was really scary. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's. It's crazy because like you, I streamed games before I, we started Max on deck. Um, I think Chewy streamed a couple times as well, but we would play Overwatch, Counter-Strike, PUBG. We would stream and uh, or I would stream it on my personal channel. And like, I don't know, it was always a little bit demoralizing. Like you, you spend all this time, you, you stream consistently and you don't get a ton of views. And then you started doing keyboard content and it's like the community is just insane. <laughs> It is. Yeah, it's wildly different. Like, I, I know that, like, if you're streaming any game with popularity, and even, I'm coming from, like, being an Osu streamer as well, and Osu has, like, a very, like, comparable size to the makers and crafting community. Like, it's not a very big game. And even in, like, the Osu gaming, you know, streaming world, like, it's, it's really hard to build an audience. And I just mm -hmm. found it to be, I wouldn't say easier because there's a lot more effort that went into it, but it's just the, the growth is, like, more immediate in, in um, the mechanical keyboard space, I felt. Mm -hmm. Well, and that, and then there's like, uh, you know, there's that aspect of like, there's there, I mean, in re, in the mass, you know, mass scheme of things, there's not a lot of keyboard content. There's not a lot of keyboard stuff happening. 
uh, compared to you're like, oh, I really like this game. There's probably 900 people streaming that game. You know, it's like, oh, this new game came out. Cool. There's 15,000 people streaming that game. So there's there's not a shortage of content on a lot of video games. And I think that's where the kind of you, you really have to rely on you know, having a good personality mm-hmm. and getting a lot of luck, right? You got to have yeah. these people kind of go, oh, shit, you know, like you just kind of, it's because Twitch is uh, not the greatest when it comes to um, getting viewers and being able to explore for new things. Because, um, I, I mean, I remember like Osiris would send me messages like, yeah, dude, I had like, I had like nine viewers tonight. It was crazy. I was like, oh, dude, hell yeah, dude. Like, well yeah, done. Yeah. Congrats. Oh, yeah. And like our first stream, it was like, I think our first stream was like 15 to 20. And we were like, <laughs> that's a <laughs> like, huge win. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, because I don't know. We'll see. Gaming, we gaming's tough to get into, man. It is. It's, it it is really tough. Like you have to either be like super good, which I, I, I'm, I'm like not bad at video games, but I'm not like top 5% in anything. So you have to, have to be super good or super lucky or something else. Like it's, it's very difficult. It's it's definitely a grind where this did not feel as much of a grind. Um, but I think that just goes to show that like the this community's amazing. You know, we we never in our wildest dreams would ever think that we'd consistently be doing this with the numbers that we're getting, the growth that we've been getting. And, you know, thank you to you guys who are uh here watching and listening to us talk about <laughs> keyboards the nerdiest stuff really. which is really hard to explain to people <laughs> that you work with uh i had my 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 boss was like yeah like we're gonna be doing like morning announcements we're gonna be streaming morning announcements and i was like oh if you have any questions like let me know like that's kind of what i do he's like what do you stream i was like god damn it <laughs> this can't I was like i was like just fire me and make it easier <laughs> <laughs> so um but yeah, you know, so, you know, we've, we have seen a large influx of people during quarantine, um, during, doing the, the keyboard streams. So I really, but I really like, you know, you, you've stuck with it. You know, we've seen, uh, people in the past, unfortunately they get in, they get like four or five builds. They're like ready to go. They burn through them in two weeks. And then that's the last you ever hear from them except for the occasional. So how have you found kind of, uh, hitting your stride in keyboard streaming? Hmm. Well, I guess given my like previous, we're talking about like game streams and stuff like that. Like I'm kind of used to, um, you know, today might not be a stream where I get any more views or any more follows or anything. So I'm just going to do what I would usually do. And like, like before that was like, just like play ranked overwatch or whatever and do my best. And, uh, just keep on keeping at a steady pace. Like I didn't feel like I had to play like 25 ranked games in one day to make a satisfying stream. Right. And I've kind of approached like keyboard streams in the same way. Like I limit myself to, to streams twice a week, which I think is a reasonable pace for me to like have enough content where like I feel comfortable like doing something every stream, but like, I don't feel compelled to make like a build every single stream. Like I don't think that you need to, do something super big and flashy every stream to have a consistent audience and to uh to to thrive as a streamer and i kind of just took that lesson from like before it's like you know i'm not not doing anything special it's more of a consistency kind of thing uh so i've just been trying to pace myself uh trying to be re- reasonable about what kind of content i'm putting out that's like that's like a huge thing that people don't think about is like the consistency and like having a realistic approach of like if i burn the the backlog of like five or six builds I have, then I won't have anything left. And it's like they go in and they just stream like crazy and then they don't have anything or maybe the streams aren't as successful or it trails off. And then, you know, they don't have that consistency. They're not. uh, One thing that Chewie and I always talk about is like being, having your community know that they'll go to your channel at the same time on the same day every week. And you're going to be there. I think is huge for like growth. Mm -hmm. And then one thing I noticed when watching you over the past couple of weeks um, is like you do a great job of of putting your personality into it and not just being only about the keyboards, but it being about you as a person, which I think is great as well. Thank you. That That's a big compliment because I, I try to uh, I, I don't know if like authenticity is like the right word here, but I try to treat streaming as like, you know, I'm here 
doing something I would do anyway. And, you know, if you're like here hanging out with me, this is how I just kind of would, would do this thing anyway. And it, it makes it so that uh, we're talking about like consistency and talking about like long term, like I feel most comfortable that way. And I, I decided for myself that, you know, I don't want to burn myself out or burn my content out. Like both are equally important in my eyes. Oh my goodness. Well, there it is. So Mr. Uh, Alex Soto <laughs> with the big raid of 227. Guys, welcome. If you guys do not know, uh, I'm Cyrus and I are mechs on deck and we have Stray Chroma on. Uh, hit exclamation point guest, just spam exclamation point guest uh, to go give her channel a follow. Thank you, Mr. Odos. Uh, I enjoyed watching your stream this past weekend. Uh, I'm sorry I did not get to participate as much. Uh, but holidays. Um, but yeah, guys, this is Stray Chroma, a uh, fellow keyboard streamer, and we're just we're just sitting here having a chat about streaming. Imagine that. Um, but no, I found it. You know, one thing. You know, we 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 took a lot of notes from Top Clack, right? Because when we started, the two the, the three big ones at the time that we watched a lot were Top Clack, uh, Nathan Kim was just starting to pop off, and uh, 001 Anthony, which I'll never forget when uh, Osiris told me, he was like, yeah, this guy builds a keyboard every Friday night. And I was like, what the f- Every Friday? <laughs> like, every single Friday? I was like, that's a lot of keyboards, man. And uh, and he's he's grown to be a good friend. Uh, but that was, I'll never forget that. But it was, um, you know, it was the fact that it's like, I still, it's like top clocks on Thursday. Like, you know, when, when you can have that just burned into your brain, Oh, it's Thursday top clocks. And like, that should be, that was, or something that's like, let's pick the day and make it like, Oh, the association of when it's this day, I know in the back of my head that mechs on deck is on. And hopefully with some of y'all it's, it's stuck around uh, where I know, I know at least our mods know it. So that's good. <laughs> <laughs> there's a few, there's, there's a couple of people. Um, but yeah, so, it's it's definitely interesting getting started. Um, it's like it, like Chi said, it's not it doesn't feel like quite a grind on like the viewer count, but it feels like a a grind in terms of like all of the background stuff, like we were talking about with gear, getting builds, like staying up with like things that are happening in the community, um, which is crazy. Um, and I'm actually interested how like what do you look at in the community? Like what are some things that you're excited for? Um, some products that are coming out that you're looking to get in on. Okay. So when you said like staying up with things in the community, I like wrote it down really quick, quick because I was just like, okay, this is the part where like, I'm super bad. Like chat <laughs> will tell me new things every day. Like I, there's just like so much that happens in the community now. Like, especially compared to when I was into the hobby at 2015, like we were lucky to have a good mechanical R slash mechanical keyboard post, maybe like every couple hours. Right. And it was a lot slower and it was a lot easier to keep up with things back then. But now, now I feel like um, I, I mean, I, I, I like signed up for a Geek Hack account. So I'm, like, I'm trying to keep up with stuff there. And I, I get most of my stuff via the like mechanical keyboard subreddit and mech market. Um, but like I know that's a pretty limited scope in like terms of keeping up with news. So I just feel like I, I'm kind of behind. Like I'm not sure where to uh, get started. But recently, um. I think it's called mechgroupbuys.com has been like the place where I check it basically as regularly as you would like a news app. Like I open it like every morning to like check of like what's new and what what, what to look forward to. Um, but in terms of like stuff coming up, I I know the Vega group buy like just started, but that's like that's pretty much it until like January where I'm looking forward to like GMK dots and basically every other bip set and also having more money to buy more keyboards because the holiday season is just like kind of slamming my wallet. <laughs> I know the feeling. Well, that's, you know, and this is, if, if I had to give like one tip to someone who's like, I want to get into keyboards so I can make some money. Uh, like obviously you're wanting to get into keyboards to create good content, but you do want to see um, some kickback, some help on your hard work. Um, and you know, it something that I know that we would do as well is invest your money in making good quality content. Because if you invest money in making a good looking stream and, you know, things that will help you stream, the money for keyboards will come later. Yeah, it might suck and you might get delayed some later, but it was what? 
probably eight months before Osiris and I spent any of our stream money on keyboards. We we did it to travel. That was the big one, but uh, can't really travel right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it was actually kind of funny. We were we had like a little old meeting powwow, whatever you want to call it. And we're like, like we're not traveling for a year. We could. <laughs> buy some switches buy some caps <laughs> like we had this big savings for for traveling it's like it's it's going to be at minimum you know a, a year from now by the time we're hopping on a plane going anywhere love yeah, to travel you know maybe maybe it, you know drive somewhere but even then it's like well what what if the meetup that just defeats the purpose so it's uh alex Otis, i don't know what money is okay okay <laughs> to okay be- hype beast calling call I mean- out it's funny because I think I think there's like a con- conception like I know with other channels and then I think I'm not sure with us but like people think that like we make a ton of money on it. It's like we don't make a ton of money and all of the money we get goes back into stream or like us buying keyboard stuff with it. So it's yeah, like the o- the only time we've used it was for vet bills. Yeah. That's the oh, only okay. time that we've we've ever done outside, and I was like, I mean, we we try not to share every single dollar we've ever spent because that's not really anybody's business except our right. own. But yeah, it's it's rare that you know we're we're just sitting there going, yeah, let's go sweet, spend all this money on like, you know, uh, we should get it. All this. I was going to say on alcohol, and I'm like, we should get like a nice bottle of something. <laughs> 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 the holidays are upon us, um, so. Let's ask the hard hitting quite the serious questions because this is a serious interview. Right, serious. So, uh you've been streaming for quite some time, so you probably have a little bit more of a uh, a take on this. But being a uh being a female in the streamer world can, has its uh it has its specific challenges that um not everybody has to face. So, how have you faced that and is there anything you would want to say to the other women um in the in the chat that you know, who are maybe thinking about streaming, but are a little on edge of whether or not they would want to. So, um, I mean, this is like a, kind of a common question that I get as like a female streamer. It's like people kind of wonder like the same questions. It's, it's totally valid. And I feel like um, my my biggest concern at being a woman uh, on a platform like Twitch or really any sort of like female content creation is that you get labeled pretty easily. Like, I don't know if you're a I don't know, Twitch streamer and you happen to be female, you're automatically an e-girl or you're automatically this or that or whatever. And you have to be like fit into certain profiles of women. And if I can't easily like profile you in category of woman, like then, then I feel like people either don't take you seriously or like they kind of just try to like judge you for like your flaws that don't fall within these like e-girl category or like gamer girl or whatever. Like if you don't, if you don't fit into this specific label, like I feel like I, I struggle really hard to like, uh, like be myself and not be bothered by like labels and stuff. But it's kind of hard when you're on Twitch. Like it, I think that there's a lot of, I don't know, drama or controversy or whatever about just like, I don't know if you're you're like if you're a female and you're you're streaming, you're only doing it for attention. Or like if you're female and you're streaming, then like you're not as good as like your male counterparts who are doing the same thing. Like it's it's it, it extends beyond Twitch, but particularly that has been challenging for me. But I don't know. I feel like I don't know. I, f- I feel like as a gamer in particular, like I face online toxicity like all the time. So maybe I've just gotten used to like knowing how to deal with it. Like knowing that like okay, most of these people you're like never going to see again. Like most of these people like wouldn't say this to your face. And no matter what like label they attach to you, or if they call you an e girl, they call you a you know maybe maybe less appropriate names like that that is a reflection of their character and not my in my abilities like just because you're calling me an e-girl that doesn't mean that i'm any less of a quality streamer or i put out any less quality content right and i feel like this is something or like the the mentality that like as a woman you have to work twice as hard to prove yourself like to see yourself as like equal to to people who are are, are sexist uh i feel like i just trying my best on, on stream and in real life to say fuck that uh <laughs> i am confident in my own abilities and i don't need your validation or criticism in that regard yeah, absolutely preach yeah hell for sure. yeah i'm actually hell interested yeah. as as someone who streamed games for a long time um and then now switching to keyboards has that like 
how has that experience differed? Like, has there been a noticeable difference between the perception or, or the things that you would see in chat uh, from game streaming to uh, keyboard streaming? Um, so this maybe is like more of a commentary on like the communities and the differences uh, that they have. I feel like the keyboard community, we're all about like, oh, everyone's got preference. You know, like everyone's, everyone's a lot of like keyboards, you know, it's keyboards are for everyone. Everyone, you know, like there's no barrier to entry to like keyboards, right? But in games, it's like, oh, get good or like you're your trash or whatever. And it has a very, I don't, I don't want to like generalize it too much by saying like gaming has toxic culture, but I feel like some in, in some communities uh, in online gaming, uh, they don't like practice, I guess, like healthy habits or healthy relationships with games and therefore are prone to using like dehumanizing language and, and they're just more ready to do that. So given that like the gaming community is already more toxic and then you added the fact that I'm female on top of it. Like I have faced a lot of people in game going like, you know, make calling me, you know, inappropriate, inappropriate names and uh, saying that, oh, you know, this, you're, you're a female, go play healer or whatever. It's like, I, I definitely faced a lot more of that in the game community than in the keyboard community. Um, but that's not to say that like in the keyboard community, I haven't experienced like some, like maybe not direct sexism, like no one's directly insulted me, but people uh, I feel like are more prone to question my opinion. And I try hard to, in order to combat that, have informed opinions, have a, you know, methodology, uh, what's, what's the word? Method. Methodology. Methodology. I have a methodology to like how I form my opinions. Like when I'm trying new things, I make sure that everything I do is consistent. And I hope that through those efforts, like people learn to respect my opinions. Um, but yeah, I mean, I just, the keyboard community is a lot more friendly. I have a lot less of a problem with it here than in gaming. Also, I want, uh, <laughs> super able tie. That's the greatest thing I've seen in a long time. Desolder the labels. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get that on a shirt and, st- and do something with it. That's an amazing, amazing statement. And I want to <laughs> bring out, I, I, I quoted you the other night, by the way, and I, I typed this out. Uh, you said specifically, and this has some, this is to me the epitome of keyboards, and you summed it up in one sentence. If MX Blues is the best switch for you, then it's the best switch ever. And I was like, I, I literally was like, fuck, I got to write that down. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, and because it just, that's it. That's it. There's that's no, it. you know, you know, that's, I don't, I don't like being asked what's the best switch. I don't like being asked what's the best keyboard. Cause I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. It could be very different from you. I, I, don't, I don't think there is the best of anything, right? There's just something that I like a lot. But just because I like one thing doesn't mean I absolutely have to hate the opposite, right? Like, I love tactile switches. Typing on a linear board right now. I switched to my crown, like I said I would. And, you know, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't have to be this, you know, that I, we try and avoid saying this is the best this. This might be the best for this. But, you know, with like with things like maybe like lube where it's like, oh, at this time, this, uh, at, you know, this is what I recommend. This is what I've used the most. I know Osiris has been trying to find the next lube <laughs> that you can oh. buy off Amazon. Um, yeah. But, you know, it's 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 hard making these statements when this is a hobby built on customizing something specifically to you. Yeah, I. I mean, who else is going to touch your keyboard? Like, really? Like, who, who, who else's opinion does this matter to? If, like, if you like MX Browns, but, like, the Reddit says that you, you know, you shouldn't, like, Reddit is not touching your keyboard. It's not theirs. <laughs> totally true. Because, I, yeah, there's, there's like, unnecessary hate on things. Like, it, the, the MX Browns thing's, like, kind of a meme, but also, like, there are people who don't, like, understand that it's a meme and, like, actually think that it's, like, true hate. And it's, like... No, it's literally it's literally just a meme. At, at at one point, all of us were like, "MX Browns are are pretty good." Hell yeah! Yeah, my first board was MX Browns. You know, I, I have a fond fondness for MX Browns. Razor greens, baby. <laughs> Dude, he's trying to <laughs> trying to light up the the room with the with the Hell keyboard yeah, sounds. Dude. Laser, laser sounds. Um. No, it's, you know, that's the Browns thing is, you know, because what, what I will always say is like, hey, there are like, how, what, what are you trying to get out of a tactile? Do you want to feel the switch or do you want to fucking feel the switch? 
<laughs> and because you know a lot of people like I, I feel like this is a lot like a, clicky doesn't get called tactile a, a clicky switch is technically a tactile clicky switch mm-hmm. because there's a tactile feel to the click and when people start typing especially like when the heavy clicks came out because a box navy is still one of the most tactile switches i've ever used it's just extremely sharp tactility um but it has to overcome a bump and when you type on something like that people are like god oh, this look it sounds great and it feels great and all of that and i'm like yeah because it's a really really tactile feel and you're not used to that super tactile feel mm-hmm. and it's just harder harder to recreate si- with not like a snap noise to it a mm-hmm. click um and so I, that's why i kind of find it funny when it's like you can go to this where it's this like epitome of tactile or you can go to like an MX Brown uh, or a Gatoran Brown or whatever. And it's like, that's nothing compared to some of these other switches. And then that's, that's where that kind of like, well, Hey, maybe try this, maybe try this, maybe mm-hmm. go a little bit more of a bump. Yeah. We're kind of here as like guides. Like we're, we're not telling people like what's, what's best, but it's like, Oh, well, you know, this is like this. And therefore use that information, you know, with your own brain and, and see where that falls in, in your thinking. Oh, buy a, sw- buy a switch tester. <laughs> switch testers are a good idea, yeah. Uh, especially because uh, this one's for not Geo. I don't know if he's in the chat, but switch testers will give you one hundred percent what it feels like to type on a board. I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, <laughs> counteract you. Statement. Fact that I'm laughing, if I'm <laughs> laughing my way through that statement, not a hundred percent, one hundred percent false. But, but uh, it's a great test. It, it, it will helps it, you narrow you can, your third. Yeah, it'll yeah. weed out some that you're like, oh no, I don't like. Like if you hit one once and you don't like it, there's a good chance you're not going to like <laughs> yeah. it on the full board. You hate yeah. it in the switch <laughs> tester, you're going to hate it in the full board. <laughs> um, I'm actually I'm interested because, you know, we're we're into December now. We're in the tail end of the year. You know. Oh, finally. January brings the New Year's resolutions. What are some things that you want to accomplish? Uh, not only with your your content. Uh, but also like just in keyboards in general in 2021. Oh man. Uh, well, okay. I think my most immediate goal, um, and this is something that ever since coming back to Twitch, I've like been working towards, but I really wanted to shoot for partnership in 2021. Uh, I've been an affiliate for like, like I said, 37 months and not that I have been streaming that whole time, but you know, I've just been on the platform for a long time and Uh, honestly like in the beginning when i was like just starting i didn't think that i would be that would be like an attainable realistic goal and now that uh if i stick to where i'm at i think that i truly can i can reach for that next year and so i'm really excited for that and in terms of other like keyboard related goals i really want to learn more about like like the design process that goes behind like making all these custom things that I'm like really interested in. Like, I think one of my main inspirations for like coming back to the hobby and also just like for my goals in the future is, um, Minlotica. Um, cause she is like, uh, she makes like my favorite keycap set. And I just really want to learn how to make stuff as cute as she does, to be honest. <laughs> she definitely makes things, uh, cute. That that yeah. that is that is yeah, not a whole club. Yeah. <laughs> so Osiris, what about you? That's a good question for the table. What about you? Yeah. What do you want to achieve in keyboards? Uh, in keyboards, I would love to. Uh, I would love to finally finish the set that I've been like working off, working on, off and on for like a year and a half, um, and and run that of at some point. Um, and then maybe, you know, also similar to get into more of like design aspect. And then like in terms of content, uh, Chewie and I have some plans for some things that we want to do and some things that might change up the way that the things look and feel here on mechs on deck. Um, but yeah, and I want to, I don't know, we, we always talk about, I always talk about how I want to do more stuff on YouTube and then it never happens because a lot of work, oh, yeah, um, same. <laughs> but Maybe maybe stop playing so much Overwatch and like <laughs> actually do that. <laughs> what about you, Chewy? Um, get the Zyko mat out, finish mm-hmm. the Squid 60 you buy. Um I've been talking about doing the the Baka 70, which I would love to be able to accomplish. Mm-hmm. Uh I won't work on two boards at the same time though, because that I would get confused. Um 
so probably those three in, in regards to keyboards i have no intent on designing keycaps as every time i start designing something i wind up back at terminal um <laughs> <laughs> and so uh keycaps i'm like ah, I'll just i like what's out i'll leave the i'll leave the color designing to the color designers but uh more boards more boards to I'd, I'd love to get two different board layouts out i have two i have two uh very board designs that are, don't i mean they exist but not a whole lot of them are running around um with uh with some boards. And so I kind of want to move away from the 60% design and start doing some cooler things with that. Uh, and content. Yeah. It, we can't talk too much about stuff right now, just cause not everything's 100% set in stone. Um, but yeah, just, I mean, keep, keep doing what we're doing. Right. You know, it's the, the best part is, you know, I'm comfortable. I'm uncomfortably comfortable but I'm also comfortably uncomfortable, if that makes sense. Like I'm not, we're not cozy. I'd love to continue to keep growing and keep getting bigger and bigger, but I also am really enjoying this, right? You know, this is, mm. you know, there've been ups and downs this year to streaming. I think when you're, when you're putting, you know, when for the what six months, that was the job, right? And it, it kind of showed that it's like, maybe I'm not, re- maybe I'm not personally ready to take something like this full time. I don't know if I'd be able to right now, but you know, you put a lot into it and you start kind of getting yourself burnt out on it. And then it's, you know, whenever I went back to the job, I was able to appreciate it a little bit more when the world started seeming a little bit more normal. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of the escape. Like that's the other piece of like streaming is it's kind of the escape from, from everything, right? Like it's the, it's the thing you can do to wind down a little bit and, mm-hmm. and like just kind of give a different side of yourself that's maybe a little bit more raw a little bit more real um and just like kind of shoot the shit for a couple hours whether it's builds Mm. or just talking plus we get to meet cool people all the time which is nice true um so but what about you guys chat what do you guys what do you guys want what do you guys want to see if you're not someone who really feels like doing stuff outside of the wazowski aluminum case like what do you guys want to see moving forward as we approach 2021 rapidly fast as it is i felt like november just kind of was like bam bam it's over like it was was done so uh, all right well i mean yeah Yeah, that'd be nice start getting some start getting uh start getting back i I do i want to go to a meetup but i want to safely go to a meetup that would be nice this meetups quite a bit yeah i'm still uh, still upset that we didn't get to do uh keycon we had some Char- some fun Christ. plans bomb house that we were gonna hang out with a whole bunch of people we get to meet a lot of the friends that we've made here on the show but um yeah the rona soon 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 also rick clack thanks for 16 months appreciate it dude 60 man we're almost at we are dangerously close to that second child. Oh. To that Irish twin. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You hey. There. I'm Irish. Good. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, uh, yeah, so next KeyCon is going to be lit. Next KeyCon is going to be insane. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. I think it's, it's going to just, just to see people, right? Because it's just going to be a finally a chance where, you're able to see all these people. And I feel like with, with quarantine and all the amount of streamers that are out now, um, I do like that. We've seen a lot of streamers come up uh, because, you know, when you see streamers, sometimes I kind of like, all right, like this was a good stream. Let's show me what you got weekly, right? Like Mm -hmm. show me how long can you keep this up? Because some people I'm like, you've got it, but you also have to have like, it's like the business side of things, right? You have to, you really have to, treat it kind of like a it's kind of I mean that's kind of a mix of it, well as much as fun that we get to have um on mex on deck we do have to kind of treat it like a business because it wouldn't be as successful mm-hmm. you have to like I, the the way that i always put it is like i try to think of it like a like a marathon rather than a sprint um mm-hmm. and uh like similar to a business like you're reinvesting into like yourself and into your content to to make sure that it can last like that's the important thing 
Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, 256 K labs asks, how do you keep making weekly content? If you don't have money to keep buying boards. Hmm. Well, I, I'm in that position where like, I don't have infinite money to buy keyboards. So for me, what I do is I, I try to like, I'm, I mentioned earlier that I follow like mech market and I'm a very active user on mech market. So I, you know, build my boards and then sell it to someone. And, uh, I kind of like to trade with other people in this hobby. I've like done it since like since I joined the hobby in 2015. So, you know, by selling my keyboards and then buying new ones and not really being attached to like one keyboard or like growing a huge collection. I think that helps me personally. Um, and then also like, you know, loop streams are fine, guys. Like, yeah, I, I he says looping isn't content. Dude, I looping is totally content. Like it depends on the direction of the channel. Like if the if the person that you're watching is like an interesting person and they're good at interacting with chat and it's like a fun atmosphere looping streams can still be a lot of fun like then you're more focused on like what we were saying earlier about the personality the person behind the stream rather than the actual like action that's happening which i think is like super important for streamers to like grow is being a person as well as like the the things that you do right yeah, like we have like you, there's a whole section on Twitch just called just chatting and it's wildly successful and it's not like people won't sit and just talk with you like it, it, that's a proven model we like we literally can see it so having a lube stream even if you wanted to think about it as like a topic focused just chatting stream like that is valid content in my opinion mm-hmm. yeah I mean it, you're trying to push your person personality if you want someone to talk to you about this uh, Alex Odos is a great person to talk to you about this because. It's about pushing the, the the people that become, you know, more successful on Twitch or people who are pushing their personalities because you're not, you know, it, it can be easy to get a raid. It can be easy to get a lot of viewers. It's hard to sustain viewers. People are not there because some, some, yes, you're going to have hype boards every now and then you're going to have, you know, a rare board, or maybe you got lucky or maybe your friend got lucky and you're able to get one of these cool boards. Um, or if you've been doing it for a while, you're able to just kind of get some protos or something like that. Those are always fine and well, but like when Osiris and I look at the channel, we don't look at most of the time. We don't, we don't look at streams where we did a prototype that was really hyped. It's like, okay, we know that that's going to be an outlier because Mm -hmm. a lot of people are not there for you. They're there for the board. Mm -hmm. The, The point of those streams is to try and capture those people that you wouldn't have caught regard uh in another way and and hold them there and you go oh i like this board but i also like the guy that's building this board and that's where the difficult challenge comes in uh so lube streams it's all about your personality and if if you're looking at a build stream or if you're looking at a lube stream you go gosh this is fucking boring it's a lube stream it's because you're not entertained by the person so that's why loop streams can be difficult too because yeah. you have to really you're you're focused on doing something but then you have to have a conversation with chat i have a question for you guys actually so like do you guys find it hard to like do builds and pay attention to chat at the same time like is that is that something you had to get used to or i think it was grown into uh at least for me it was it was like it was something that it was like at repetition and just knowing to look up a bunch and then going on tangents <laughs> mm-hmm. I like really the reason i ask it Oh, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. You go ahead first. No, I was just going to say, I really enjoy it um, because of like coming from like playing games. And, like, you know, Overwatch, it's a very mm-hmm. fast paced game. Like sometimes when you're in the middle of the game, it can be hard to maintain that interaction. And with keyboards, like building a keyboard, it's kind of the same way. Like you're there's going to be moments where you just straight up cannot uh, be like looking at the screen. You know, if you're like soldering. Uh, you can't be reading chat while you're doing that because then you burn yourself um, or you put a hole in a PCB, which is both of those are not good things. Um, but I, I think it's one of those deals. I can't remember who said it. It was probably Harris Heller at some point of like not not wanting to have dead air. And like even if you're just mm-hmm. talking to yourself, like if you're just talking about what yeah. you're doing, like that's huge. Uh, and that makes that that eliminates dead air while you're while you're streaming and it makes people who are there feel like they're watching something that they're somewhat interacting with even though you may not be like actually interacting with the chat Mm -hmm. yeah i remember when we did the first 24-hour stream uh chat 
so that I could respond because it was where the build area was. There was no monitor, so I couldn't see anything. So I had my phone like <laughs> like on stream. It was funny. You could literally read chat. Like there was chat on stream normally, and then you could like see the phone that had chat on it, so that I could sit there and read chat. So I think another thing is you know maybe position chat somewhere if you're if you're lubing a bunch. You know, maybe put your phone or maybe lower your monitor to where you can see chat better um, so you can respond. So you're not having to look up as much. And while they might not be able to see your face that much, you know, it's it's to me, it's more important uh, that you're providing audio content that's better than what they. Well, I would not be surprised. I would be surprised if over. I would be genuinely surprised if over half people are literally sitting here staring at our stream or if they're doing something else while listening to us. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, The reason I, I asked like the question in the first place was because uh, I think it's kind of amusing, like talking to other mechanical keyboard streamers and like their struggle to like keep up with both chat and building. Because for me, coming from games, I'm used to like giving call outs and playing Overwatch and Rainbow Six Siege and being really sweaty and also looking at chat. And then coming to keyboard content, it like was really easy for me. Because I feel like everything is so much slower. And uh, I don't know, it's just, uh, I find it funny, like people who I like, hadn't streamed games before, or maybe are like new to streaming in general, like their their adjustment period to that. Yeah, absolutely. Because like, I don't know, I like to take a lot of time when I'm building. Like if you've, if anyone in chat has watched our build streams, mine typically are significantly longer than Chewy's. Uh, because like type two. Yeah, Chewy, Chewy's get in, get out. Not that he doesn't, pay attention to chat or interact it's just i go on full-on tangents i <laughs> like i'm just there to vibe and have a good time and when i finish i finish except for when like i have something to do like directly after the stream is supposed to end then i'm like all right i gotta i gotta run uh but yeah i don't know i enjoy it that's why i like when we switched from because we used to stream builds on tuesday nights and then we switched it <laughs> to saturday kind of in the middle of the year and it mm -hmm. was great because having the ability to like, if I want to stream for four hours, I can. Whereas before starting at eight o'clock streaming for four hours, that's midnight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I got to wake up and go to work at and be at work at, at that time I was having to be at work at like between six 30 and 8 AM depending on the day. And so it was, it was rough some mornings. So yeah. what is your longest build stream time for one board? That's a good question. Mm -hmm. I I know what my longest one was, but it was not. It was in the twenty four hour stream. Oh, <laughs> the TX seventy five V two took three and a half hours for me. Oh, fucking plate! Holy shit! Uh, um, Every time I say TX seventy five, my thumbs hurt. Oh, you say three and a half hours, and I'm thinking like, oh, that's not. That's very short compared to mine. I think my longest build stream is like seven hours, but that's like lubing everything and like getting everything prepped and then building it and also going on tangents and stuff. So, but seven hours is like a full work shift. So I was really tired. I think we can't, we can't be basic six switches in six hours. Yeah, no, that's not happening. That's not happening. I think mine was probably like maybe like four and a half, five hours, maybe. I don't know. Oh, man. But I'm very slow. Well, I, it, and that's but with switches already lube, right? That's just stabs, oh, okay. soldering, caps, you know, testing. Uh, the the it might have been the Austin. The Austin's pretty up there, but that's a big board. Yeah, I was gonna say it's probably yeah. some stabs. Um, yeah, because I like I literally I like having like switches need to be lubed, and uh, honestly, I would pre-lube the stabs. If it, if, but that's like literally that takes like thirty minutes, right? That, like if I didn't have that part on the stream, then I could probably do a build in an hour. But you, know, I, I'm you know, to me, it's like what lubing one switch to show someone how to do it. I'm like you, you don't. I, I'd rather just have the switches ready. I'm down to the point now where I literally will pull the keycaps for the board that I'm building exactly. So they're in a box and then I just dump the box and every key goes somewhere. <laughs> it's, <laughs> and it's, it's not like I don't, uh, you know, it build stream. I like this stuff a lot more than I like build streams. I don't, I don't hate build streams. It's just not mm. my forte. I'm better bouncing ideas off of someone. Mm. Um, but I like, you know, I kind of like running that tight ship of like, you know, let's I'm, I'm, I'm here. We're going to talk, but, and it comes from, 
when I was watching streamers, I hated sitting around there waiting and waiting and waiting. So I'm like, I just want to see what this board looks like and hear what this board sounds like. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think we talked about this a couple months ago where it's like, I love, I loved when they were like, yep. And it's done. I'm like, fuck yeah. So then I modeled that after what I like. And so who knows? So, but yeah, three and a half hours is probably the most. And that was with, that's not the longest build. The longest build was the Discipline 65, but four hours of that was off stream. Oh, I have a Discipline coming up. I'm kind of intimidated by like the USB-C. Like I think we, uh, Basic, uh, she's actually in chat, but Basic, she's like sent me a, like a video over Google Drive. It's like, okay, Courtney, this is how you do it. And I'm like, okay, thanks. And I'm still kind of scared, but thank you so much. <laughs> Uh, so you're going to do the whole thing? You're going to do all the through hole and everything on stream? Uh, yeah, it'll be an adventure. It'll <laughs> probably be longer than my longest build stream. I'm going to set a record for like nine hours for discipline. <laughs> hey, just, you can break it up into two days, you know, part one and part two. True. But that is the it's best. Hard to... oh, sorry, you go. No, it's okay. I, I was going to say that like, it's hard for me to like put down a build once I've started it. Yeah. Like, I feel like I need to finish it when I start. Yeah, uh, those builds would be perfect for 24 hour streams because it's like dude, you're just constantly working on something. The barley corn, dude. <laughs> barley corn would be fun. I, I, you know, I didn't even think about the fact that it's, it is, uh, effortless and you can use split backspace. And I was like, God, now I kind of want one. <laughs> I was looking at it earlier. If, if everyone in chat doesn't know, bar, uh, barley corn is a, the next rendition of like the, discipline line it's efroless 1800 board which means there's a lot of things to solder yeah. and it is from a different person than the people yeah. then uh yeah it's not but, cozy fanny tootie it's not this is mr cozy fanny tootie but yeah it's <laughs> it's that's a uh that's a lot of time <laughs> yeah it's a big brother of the gam and the plaid it's running over on novel mm -hmm. keys and it is pretty freaking cool looking and not very expensive and would be you're talking about discipline 65 taking a while this would be at least an extra hour oh dear i would say more more than that yeah the see i didn't have what it wasn't the it wasn't the actual soldering that took forever it was bending the diodes that took because it's like you have to bend them in a certain way or else there's going to be not enough space you're going to like and mess it up and it was for somebody else too so i was like not only do i have to do this like and not want to you know slam my head against the wall but i have to do this and make everything look perfect <laughs> and it yeah, was like just, it just was bending a, it is not enough <laughs> yeah you have to like it, that takes that took a long ass time but if, if you can get into a rhythm with it you know you could just bend them all previously so but no i i, I do kind of because that's i'm like that's a good board to like slap into an sm keyboards case and just you know have some fun with it and take it to work because that's a flat like to me that is a flex board there is flexing on the keyboard community and then there's flexing on everybody else that's not in the keyboard community because people go look at the key barley corner like oh it's cool you did a lot that's impressive but you you show that to somebody else that's not into the keyboard or not in the keyboards uh computers or anything like that mm -hmm. you're like, yeah i i did all of this people will be like oh shit it's like you made it from scratch oh my god exactly what you're doing i'm like nope i followed a diagram but thank you <laughs> <laughs> you just don't tell them that part you know you just go with yeah i put it put it all together i had to i had to buy all the components you know it just came it was just blank and i was at uh, radio, the radio shack one day and i thought i'd put a keyboard <laughs> people are already that kind of impressed with like if you build your own pc i feel like that's already like a level of enthusiast that most people like kind of don't understand so going the extra step of building your own keyboard is like whoa my god yeah i like to saying earlier about explaining what we do to coworkers, even like uh keyboards because i just started a new job a couple weeks ago and they're they're all like so you have not only do you build your own keyboards they're really expensive and you have a stream that is relatively successful where you just talk about keyboards and i'm like yeah it's very weird i don't know how to explain it but yeah it, it's a thing 
I think um, this is kind of tangentially related, but um, one of my favorite posts on r slash mechanical keyboards is like, is there's this video where it's like, oh, this is what we look like to outsiders. And it's a video where there's this guy that covers like five of the best plastic lawn yeah. chairs. Yeah. That one, that one, it's like, it's, it's like, oh, this lawn chair is from this company. It was made at this time. And it's, you know, pretty top tier, but not my, not my favorite. And I'm listening to this. It's like, oh, that that's what I sound like to other people. <laughs> My favorite is hands down the guy that drinks water and he's like, whenever you join the new hobby, <laughs> I like my pH levels between like a four and a five. <laughs> like this is so accurate. It hurts. <laughs> like I feel attacked. <laughs> I have um, some, some viewers that like still follow me like from gaming content and they uh, come into my stream sometimes. And they're like, Courtney, what's a, what's a holy panda? What is this? Is what what is what is going on here? And that I just I, I don't have the time to explain to them like all the jargon they need in order to understand my stream at a base level. It's pretty pretty enthusiast, pretty nerdy. <laughs> if you want a funny YouTube video to watch, <laughs> that video is just so fantastic. Um, yeah, you know we we'll get we'll get those from Osiris's gaming days where people were like, oh hey dude, sorry, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, I used to be. I used to be on a like an Overwatch team, like uh, we played Ooh. like different tournaments and stuff. And uh, you know, I was still like a mod in like the Discord server. And we had a whole bunch of people in there. And it was like throughout the like year and a half or two years that we were uh, a team. There's a whole bunch of people that that are in that Discord, and my name's at the top because in Discord my name starts with a zero, and it says you know streaming, and they'll come in occasionally and be like the hell is this and it's just like <laughs> oh overwatch. yeah it's not overwatch <laughs> it's not, they're like you're not playing games anymore you're just sitting there talking about keyboards you know hey i enjoy it it's fun it's good I compare keyboards to fishing if i'm trying to explain keyboard enthusiasts to people no so guys if you have questions uh for miss stray chroma sorry, please uh, ask so away hit at mechs on deck Big so it's easier for us to find cool to and g willard thank you for the two month sub pod. damn sorry i missed so much of this one big fan of stray chroma it's cool to see this ep we'll have to catch it on vod super fans Ooh. yeah thank, thanks everyone from my discord my stream for coming in and and uh watching supporting mechs on deck supporting me you guys are awesome thank you for putting uh you put like on stream december 2nd next like, that was a nice touch that was cool to see like on your yeah, stream. I, <laughs> I have like little notes because like i will forget if i don't put it there so i gotta make sure <laughs> i don't forget and also chat doesn't forget well our uh our mod had to like remind me he's like by the way the first is on a tuesday don't screw up scheduling <laughs> 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 whenever whenever uh you know tuesday wednesday falls like the first falls on one of those two days i always like screw up like because i'll say oh do you want to come on the last day of this month or the first day of this month instead of just an actual date <laughs> <laughs> yeah. thank you brez <laughs> um trey pop asks stray chroma who are your favorite keyboard streamers to watch you can't say us oh. even though it's oh, not okay <laughs> <laughs> um let me think so one thing about it is that there's a lot of keyboard streamers that stream later in the day, but I'm like a baby and I go to bed at like nine or 10. So a lot of the people that I follow, like are just like midday or like maybe they're in Europe or something. Um, but namely like Alex Odos, like he's someone that I really enjoy watching. And he's also been like a really big inspiration to me as a streamer. Um, I think I found Minterly as well, like through her YouTube comment uh, content and then followed her through Twitch. And uh, also... Basic, there's kimchi, there's tiny makes things. Who else do I freak out? Toby's. I try to, I've been trying actively to like go to other keyboard streamers and like, I feel like all you, you guys are awesome. So it's like, th those are the first to come to mind. It's crazy. I feel like every time I go and click makers and crafting and I start to scroll, there's, there's always new keyboard streamers going and I always try to like pop in and see, you know, see how it's going, see, see what it looks like. Mm hmm. It's really cool to see more people getting into it. So Jedi Junior asks Mix on Deck, Straight Chroma, what is your favorite part of keyboard streaming and your least favorite part, if any? Oh, my favorite part of keyboard streaming. 
Hmm. I think, I think the one, one thing that I try to hold is as like a personal philosophy and also something that I've, I've truly enjoyed about, uh, like being a keyboard streamer is like learning new things literally every day like not only in terms of like what's new that's coming out but also i love the experiences that people share in my chat of like what they've tried and like what their experiences are and them being excited and sharing that that, that the passion that you have for keyboards with other people like that's been my favorite part um <clears throat> and just like i guess that is a comment on like community at large like connecting with other people through the hobby through streaming has been really exciting um my least favorite part um, hmm. I think I think my least favorite part of keyboard streaming is like trying to plan out things in advance. I feel like um planning is something that I'm working on just like in general and like in my life. Uh, and particularly like I'm trying to go back to school next semester, so I'm like trying to plan around that, trying to plan for keyboard content in the future. And I feel like the stress that that puts upon me is like probably like the the hardest to deal with and my least favorite part of streaming. <laughs> Yeah, it's got to be fun, right? It's got to be. Yeah, it's got to be fun. And it's a good, like, stress is not inherently bad. Like, stress can motivate you and stuff, but it's maybe uh, a little overwhelming sometimes. I'm interested to hear what, Chewy, what your your thought is about that question as well. well favorite part oh. of streaming and least favorite part? Yeah. I can tell you the least favorite's the fucking lights. <laughs> <laughs> Christ. It's like staring into the sun two hours a night, three twice and twice a week. That's why I love doing the night daytime streams. I'm like, fuck these lights. <laughs> like, uh, I I don't. I'm not a big fan of the lights. So that's honestly, um, that's valid. The best part, I mean, I I don't want to say the people because I do enjoy uh, talking to people. I think just getting to talk to so many different streamers. Right. And I, it is, it is a very gratifying feeling when someone goes, I'm nervous to be on your show because that means that we've done something which, sorry, spoilers, a, a straight crime. I said, Oh, I'm nervous to be on this show. Uh, <laughs> the beginning of the stream, but um, you know, you know, Cyrus and I are just two dudes that live in Texas and like keyboards and other hobbies. And We've been we've been wanting to do like content around one of the hobbies we've had for a very long time. And to get to a point where people that that people watch us over and over, which is very nice. Um, and then people get to kind of find new people through our channel. But then when the when when we ask someone um and they go, Wait, really me? Like on Mex on deck, and I'm like it, it confuses me, but it's very gratifying because I'm like, oh, that we've we've built something th where that is somewhat respected, <laughs> at least not at least by other people, not by us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I definitely had that feeling. It's like, he's like me. We, I'm talking about keyboards with other people that are known to talk about keyboards. Like that, that's crazy. That's crazy. I think basic gave the best response. Cause I told her on stream, I was like, hit me up. We'll do an interview. And she was like, <gasps> oh <my God. laughs> the reactions uh, are the best though. Her reaction, yeah, she <laughs> everything greatly. Yeah. And then, you know, like, like I said, just fuck lights. I just, I hate lights so much, <laughs> so much. <laughs> Dude, I even, I, I roll the lights even on, uh, even on the uh, the Saturday streams, yo, I'm 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 okay with it. Like, I, how much ISO can I crank into this camera? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> hey, I've got a big softbox, so that yeah, that you've got, makes you've got it's like it's not directly in your fucking like I've got a light. So for those wondering, I, I can maybe I can hold this up. There's a light literally right there, and then I have an off light over here, so it's just right in my face, and I'm and, and I lighting is probably my least favorite part of streaming in general because lighting is tricky because mm -hmm. like a small little just eh, is gonna could throw everything off so like figuring everything out is annoying so next stream just just me sitting here like like hello everybody <laughs> like, well, that'd be comfortable though because it gets hot with lights too mm -hmm. all this is it's all right not too bad yeah that mm -hmm. A camera and look and i have the flip up on the screen so even the camera doesn't get hot so that's nice oh, so. i just get really really hot but <laughs> what about you what about you osiris 
Um, my least favorite thing. Oh man. I don't know. I feel like the having to, uh, just like, I don't know. I was going to say like, just keeping up with everything. Like, I feel like, you know, you're, we were t- we talked earlier about how like staying up with things on the community and um i feel like bad like a couple weeks ago we were talking about i can't remember we were talking about the KBD 75 or KBD uh 8x right and i didn't know that they had rerun it and i felt awful that i didn't know that they had rerun it and it's just like like those moments are when i'm like like I feel like I have to know about everything, which is a big like burden because I'm not checking Geek Hack every day the way I was, you know, two years ago when there was only like four new posts every day. <laughs> it was easier to keep up with. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. and now I'm just and like it, I'm not into course, that, right? Because all the information is spread everywhere. Yeah, and so. Yeah. It's tough to to find out. Luckily, the big things are easily like they pop up in our Discord conversations, or it's like, "Hey, did you see this? Hey, did you see this?" But uh, and big shouts like our mods really do help a lot, and a lot of people, a lot of the, our good friends will help because they'll see something and they'll th- show us. And it's tough. It's, I mean, it's it's borderline a full time job. That's why we we never really wanted to do news, and then especially after April of two thousand nineteen. Uh, when the floodgates open, we're like, no, like just no, yeah, <laughs> like, like it's it's too much. And top clock changed because of it, and I'm like, I don't blame you, because holy shit, that's just, it's just it's too much, and it becomes border. It's like it's just information at that point, and there's like, how do you put your personality behind information? Yeah, for sure. And then favorite thing would be, um, just like the chance of being able to interact with people. I've always really enjoyed, I, I've always been a very creative person, both Chewie and myself. We, we were musicians. Um, you know, I, I toured and stuff, played music for a long time, stopped playing music. And there was a huge, you know, hole in that creative aspect for me. And I know Chewie felt the same. And that was why we had initially started with trying to do magic content for Magic the Gathering because um, we were super nerds there. And then we were like, oh, let's talk about video games and, TV shows and do a like a YouTube channel and then it never panned out. Um, and then this finally panned out and it's like, it's a great way to explore creatively. And I know for Chewy as well as myself, it's been cool to get into things like video videography and photography, um, things that we're both like pretty into now that we didn't really know that we would be into a couple of years ago. Um, so that's been kind of my favorite thing is like being able to like scratch my creative itch in a sense. Yeah. Uh, real quick, Jedi Junior, the floodgates of April of 2019 is when we saw like eight GMK sets run in the same month. And that was like unheard of at that time. That was insane. That now it's like, eh, whatever. That's yeah. like okay. eight? Just, only like, eight? Only eight? Only eight? Yeah. Like, <laughs> like later in the year, 13 were being run at the same time. I think we counted 17 different sets. So, but that's when like the, that's when things went into full throttle. So we've got a, a, a few more questions. Lord Gengar Khan. That's a dope name. What would your nightmare keyboard be? Layout switches colorway. Um, hmm. Trey, you go first. Hmm. Okay. Anything without arrow keys, like it's already kind of a no for me. So let's say, I don't know, like a, like a, like a 75%, but instead of arrow keys, it's just like more macros. And it's like, that's not useful to me. So something like that. And also like all of my keyboards are like pink or white. So maybe let's go like the opposite where it's like, not like black, because black is pretty classic, but I don't know, some some wacky color, like like neon green or something with like atrocious, I don't know. Let's say, I don't know, purple keycaps on it or something. Something, something, something crazy. What about you? Um, so I think it was called the Pain Twenty Seven. It was literally just alphas, nothing else. Oh. It's just alphas. That keyboard 
where every switch is a different switch that is all weighted differently. So like everything is completely different. And then like full on keycap grab bag from like a meetup. Like, cause you know how oh. at like NorCal <laughs> drop had like that entire thing. It had like everything DSA, MT3, Cherry, uh, SA, like just, just like all of it all at yeah, once. Like, like vomit. Yeah. The vomit uh, <laughs> keycap set. And that would be, that would be awful. That would be awful. Um, a 65% with an HHKB blocker on the left and orange with a forced, uh, non-stepped caps lock. Oh God. I think well, I'm not a, not a fan of like HHKB or like wind keyless. Like I kind of, I like the uniformity of the bottom row. So, like, let's see. I love, too. I love wind keyless, but the HHKB style blocker, I need that control for games. Mm-hmm. I need to crouch. And I hate the color orange. Um, so that, and then I don't like 65%. So, yeah. Like 65%, it's like um, you kind of only see 65% in one flavor, right? I feel like there's not very many other ways I've seen it mixed up. Like not even like separated like arrow keys or whatever. Like it's it's kind of rare to deviate from that layout. What What is your favorite layout? Someone asked that earlier. Oh, uh, probably 75%. Um, but like, like the ID80, like I like 75% to have a little bit more room. So like satisfaction 75 is something I really like, uh, ID80 as well. Uh, I need my F row. I need my arrow keys. That's, that's, that's just my preference. Um, kind of, I actually like full size. I had an Austin. I just wasn't using it. Um, that's why I'm liking this, the, the the barley corn because i'm like it's a cheaper way to get a cool board of full size um so how can i hate 65 percent man i don't know watch our content and it's, try, it's more of like a channel meme it. yeah at this, at this point, point. I, don't, I don't have like a hatred it's a good it's okay one it's a good way to save my wallet right like True. pick something you don't like boom now now i don't have to buy 65 percent I don't, it's, it's a symmetry thing. That's really all it, it's a symmetry thing. And it's a lot, it's like, oh, well, TKLs and 75, 75s and TKLs give you more stuff. They give you more. And, and then it kind of with, with the, now that you can add in the uh, mod F row keys, it can kind of round out the board where the, it's like super heavy on the right. And it's, it's just a preference. Um, are you getting a Vega then, Chewy? I don't. I don't even. I'd have to remind myself what a Vega is. There's too it's many the, keyboards coming. It's the sixty-five uh, oh. Polaris. Yeah, I'm good. Mm. I'll, I'll pass. Is this a proprietary PCB as well? Probably not. It's it's probably supported with uh, AIO 3s uh, daughter board thing, universal oh. daughter board. Mm-hmm. Uh, that would make sense because that was a big issue with me with the Polaris is that it was proprietary PCB. Um, what was the other question? Stray, what kind of stuff do you want to do with streaming in the future? Uh, hmm. Let me think. I think my, my, my biggest goal is to like try to like collaborate with other people a little bit more. Um, I'm like really, like I'm very introverted, right? So like the whole networking thing, the whole like being social and like getting to know other people, even if you like, I genuinely want to get to know them, like it's, it's really hard for me. So I feel like I want to like break out of my shell a little bit, reach out to people who have interesting projects I want to work with, maybe like do prototype build streams for them or like help them with ideas and stuff like that. And, and uh, bringing more of like the, I don't know, like community aspect, the collaboration aspect to my, my streaming is definitely one of my, my main goals for next year. Do you ever uh do you ever see yourself doing more more gaming again? Um, I don't know. To be honest, I feel like um right now I'm trying to be like consistent, so I'm only sticking to like keyboard content or maybe like the occasional Animal Crossing or like Among Us stream, like something really vanilla that a lot of people can watch. But um in terms of like gaming, uh right now I'm playing a lot of Path of Exile, and that's not I, I don't think it's a very st- streaming friendly game. It's like really complex and like there's a lot of just like sitting around and selling items involved. And I don't think that would be 
I'm not good at making that kind of content enjoyable. So uh, for now, I'm kind of like not considering gaming uh, or like getting back to game streams. But like maybe in the future when I settle back into like, or maybe when I settle and get more comfortable with keyboard content, then I can expand to like another day of streaming where it's something completely different. Yeah. For sure. Uh, Delphin asks, are you three getting muted too? I don't know what that is. GMK muted. muted. Oh, okay. Uh, there's so many keycap sets. <laughs> uh, I am not because I have modern Dolch light coming in and that will fill that void for me. I feel like it's not too much different. I, I'm already on GMK minimal. It's not too much different from that. So I don't think I'd get this. Yeah, I'm getting, I have modern Dolch light on the way as well. Um, I feel like if I didn't have that, I'd probably be looking to get muted too. But also I'm like, I don't know. I'm not really trying to, to buy a bunch of stuff right now. I just bought two keyboards. Oh, and, congrats. Yeah. So, and I so bought Moto a couple months dollars. ago. Yeah. So. What's your dream build? Money's no object. Rama U80. <laughs> Interesting. That's a mm -hmm. su that's a surprisingly conservative answer. What what yeah, what caps? Quick too. What switches and well, caps? Um. Okay. So I, I, I would already I would already say like cat milkshake, but I own it. Like literally when I joined back the hobby, I was thinking about this keycap set like every day. So I just went ahead and got it because I, I wanted to I wanted that to stop. So cat milkshake is already like my my dream keycaps already set, and then Rama U80 because it's. I know that it's a kind of conservative, uh, like it's not exactly like your luxury keyword or the one that gets the most hype, but I don't know. I just really fell in love with the design and I really like the, like the, either the white or the lake color. That's what I've been really wanting. Cause I wanted to match, um, cat Mizu. Okay. What about you, Chewy? Um, I mean, Baka is not an option or the squid. That's fine. Um, I don't know. That's that's tough because I like, you know, I have a lot of the things that I have I got because I know I like, you know, it's, I've spent time. Maybe, you know, okay, I don't care for the Matrix boards, but maybe the crown in that avocado green that Matrix boards has with camping on it. Um, I would love to have Zykos, enough Zykos to fill out a TKL. That would be cool. Um, and instead of, I would also, I think another, you know, I've always wanted uh, SA camping. I've, you know, that's kind of a dream set for me that I'll never obtain because the price on that aftermarket, the price on that aftermarket like three years ago was $400. And that's, that was like, that was like two, two and a half, three years ago. That's a lot. So I don't know. Um, obtainable goal probably the design that i want to do for the the baka 70 which i've talked about some but i won't talk about right now just because i'm trying to decide on which one i want to go forward with i'm gonna do something that's impossible so that way yeah <laughs> um so i'm gonna say specifically the the um phantom colorway key colt number two uh, it was a very small run of that, and I had an opportunity to get it, but it was way more money than I could handle at the time. Um, so that, but it would be not MX, it would be Alps switches Ooh. with Alps browns. And then, man, keycap set is up in the air because... We're gonna we're gonna live in this fantasy land where Alps now has MX stems and can use a GMK set. <laughs> um, and oh man, what is? I don't even know what I would want to put on that. Oof. Something you designed. <laughs> yeah, but the the set that I'm designing would not fit on that board. Um, make another one. <laughs> true, true. Um, I don't know. Probably. What would look good on that? Dude, I don't even know. I mean, Future Funk, I'm sure, will look fine. Dude, Future Funk would look sick. Also, like, we'll, we'll take it back. Do, like, a Violet on Cream. 
you know, Ooh. like an OG, like one of my first like cherry, my, my first cherry profile set that I purchased that wasn't um, like on something like because the uh, the Tadas come with their like proprietary set um, was a like purple on white was JTK purple on white. So, yeah, violet on cream would kind of be the full nostalgia there. Or maybe Metaverse or Monochrome. Either mm-hmm. any of those three. One of those. Yeah. <laughs> to be honest, like you're you're talking about like key cults and stuff, and I'm like, yeah, when you say it's like a conservative answer for me to say like Brahma, I'm just like most of my content is pretty like budget oriented, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Like I've never handled a keyboard more expensive than like my Alice. Um and not that like I'm I'm still happy with all of my keyboards and stuff, but like I don't I don't dare to dream about a key cult if like I can't I can't. I can only dream small right now. <laughs> they're cool boards. <laughs> <laughs> they're they're fun ones. Um. So, but yeah, I mean, that's the best part about the hobby too, right? It's like I want this. Cool. I'm just gonna go design it. Like, <laughs> yeah. I would love to learn more how to do that. It's I. I don't know how to actually go into Fusion, but I know someone that will do all the work while I send them exactly what I want. So I don't have the technical like, oh, this is the design, mm-hmm. but I can have pictures, I can draw. You know, there's the infamous on a napkin picture of the Baca. Um, <laughs> that, but you know, it's like you don't have to be able to use Fusion and, and be able to design all this stuff if you just know what you like. If you have enough experience with a lot of different things and you just know what you like, you're you're very close to being able to get something exactly what you like, which is what I did. So, and then, yeah, I mean, money also helps. <laughs> I'm interested if, cause you, you're talking about how uh, a lot of what you do is, is uh, budget oriented. Is that something that you want to, you want to stick with? Is that like a focus for the channel or is that just something like kind of like a happy coincidence? Uh-huh. Well, it's because um, honestly, like I don't have like client builds really. Like right. I'm only starting to get into stuff like that. So all of the boards that I have are for me or for for people that I know. And honestly, like focusing around budget mechanical keyboard is kind of just what I know because that's what's within my means at the moment. Um, and if that if those means change in the future and I'm able to you know play around with more uh, more expensive keyboards or just like more exciting projects or whatever, like I I I will go in that direction. But it's it's mostly just what I, I can work with personally right now. Mm-hmm. So, uh, someone give this girl a key code to build stat. Oh no! <laughs> hey, let's do a chat. Get her one. Get come on. No, oh no! I will. Cry. I'll actually cry. Like don't don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> is is there a board that? Because um, I feel like for a lot of people, for me, it was the M sixty five A. Um, there was like a. It, was there a board that you saw on Reddit, like a picture that you remember distinctly where you were like, I want that before you got heavy into the community? Yeah, it was sat 75 and I unfortunately couldn't grab it on this previous round. Like I was in the checkout line and then by the time I got there, everything was sold out and I was like, oh no. But it definitely sat 75. It's like kind of, um, uh, I think I first stumbled upon it on Instagram actually. And then I saw it was really popular on Reddit as well. But that that one... The, the fact that that got away from me is is hard to accept. Yeah, mine's mine's been the the TXCP. That was the one that I was like, that board fucking rules. So, uh, guys, if you have any more questions, please at Max on Deck. I'm going to go through our amazing uh, and awesome sponsors real quick. Switchmod.net. Uh, you can go to switchmod.net slash max on deck 4% off your order. Keep your eyes peeled for next month. Uh, we're going to see GMK muted too. So uh, just stay tuned for that. You can go to max on deck.dixiemac.com. Pick up GMK think caps. Uh, if you want that kind of cool retro look, the, the nineties retro look uh, as well as GMK 8,082 or 80,082, whichever you want to say uh, is coming out uh, next month as well. You can go to Project Keyboards from xondeck.project.link. Uh, they don't have any sets running at the moment, but they will be having some sets soon, as well as make sure to keep uh, keep an eye on They do release pr- uh, pre-orders every now and then, um, so be sure to kind of keep that bookmarked and looking. And then canonkeys.com slash mexondeck, GMK Hallyu, GMK Pink on Navy. They've also got, uh, it looks like Hallyu has uh, stopped, but uh, we got Pink on Navy running um 
so very classic set very like it's like the that's kind of like the subtle but it's also pink so are you going to be getting gmk pink on navy uh pink on navy is a little like the overall color scheme is quite dark um and i don't think i have a board that would match that at the moment so i'm thinking probably no and i also just bought like literally all of magic girl so i'm kind of cool in it on keycaps for a little <laughs> while like literally all of it the desk mats and everything every kit like i just didn't even cool it I, there's no room for keycaps right now you know i think i don't think i've ever done that with a keycap set i've never bought every kit that was available yes yeah i Jim K nice bro there's only one well, that, that doesn't like <laughs> it doesn't count Not when there's them. no child kits <laughs> Dave, gosh, um, yeah, I I was waiting for Magic Girl to come back for like a full year because it was what got me back into the hobby. So like I needed it. <laughs> there you go. And then our awesome uh, partners, um, Zap Cables. If you want one of the best cables that he will use, uh, Zap Cables makes those. Uh, Type Beast. You can go to typebea.st for an amazing newsletter. And then Smith Rune. You can go to smithandrune.com to pick up pick up some merch they've got comfy cozy sweatpants and it is comfy cozy sweatpants season so thank you but, trey, uh, look, yeah, trey yeah you got it say trey pop asks stray chroma what type of switches do you prefer uh linears um i think it, it's partially because um coming from rhythm games like every rhythm game gamer uses linear switches uh and I just kind of stuck with it. And I'm trying to branch out and try more tactile switches because I know the options are a little better now than, than before. But for now, that's that's where I stand. What about you guys? Uh, tactiles. <laughs> Super intense tactiles. I float Very. between both. Yeah. I float between mm -hmm. both. I, uh, I, I typically use a, like a linear board at home playing games a lot. Uh, sometimes mm -hmm. I'll use tactiles and then at work it's mainly tactiles i don't know mm -hmm. i don't know why i float between both for a while i was full on tactile uh, and that was like all i had and um then i then i built my serious with uh the nolives which are nolive creams just creams but a different color and diff slightly lighter spring weight uh kind of fell in love with linears again and i built a couple of linear boards after that I think I just need to try more switches. Like I have a pretty good understanding of all like the Cherry MX line and a couple of like more stuff that uh, like Getteron inks and whatever. And but I, I feel like in terms of like experience with a bunch of different switches, like I I can only buy one set at a time. So I'm I'm catching up and trying to do more things. And switches are getting more expensive. I mean the 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 money creep has oh, yeah. been a thing. So it's mm -hmm. nuts. Uh, yeah, it's like it because you know used to it was like oh three forty for ten all right sweet and then it's like you know, forty bucks shipped out the door sweet I got a board. Mm -hmm. so, um, it is funny that I say tactile. I'm literally typing on a linear, <laughs> and then <laughs> my work board, my perma work board is a linear as well. So uh, it's just a you know it's it's all preference, right? But mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, pylon seven. Once you start Franklin switching, it it's tough. Because then, you, then you just have to keep finding the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. So oh, we are all we are dying for meetups. Get into forties, then you barely need any switches. Absolutely, <laughs> big brain move. Um, so is that is is that Switch Couture board your first Alice? Oh well? yeah, it is actually. How are you enjoying that layout? Because that's kind of a. It, it's one of those things I know for both Chewie and myself when we first started. With the Alice, we have a board called the Osa, and it was mm -hmm. like you look at it and you're like, "This is going to be weird to type on." And then, like five minutes later, you're like, "I love this." Did you have that same experience? Yeah. So, like my usual typing speed uh, on like a regular keyboard was like 115, 110, 110 to one fifteen. And then my first typing test with the Alice was like literally forty five words per minute. It felt trash. And um, I I tried to practice with it like over the com like a couple days after I had built the keyboard and I just did it super fast and then like last stream I was just being like hey chat you know I'm I'm not typing on this better and it was the first time that on stream I had broken 120 words per minute so I'm not saying that the keyboard is making me type faster or anything but it's very comfortable and I'm liking it a lot so far. Yeah, it's like weirdly comfortable. Like you know, I, I yeah, like I, I go to work and type on that and I have no problem adjusting. 
Um, yeah. I The only thing about it is like, I can't game on it. Like, I don't know if any of you guys play League of Legends, but like the D and F keys are like my flash and my heal. And there have been times where I'll heal instead of flash and that gets you killed really quick. And I, I just, I, I, for some reason, maybe it's just like the muscle memory that I've built over time, but like gaming on this is very weird. And I don't, I don't think I can get used to that, but otherwise I am loving the layout so far. Yeah, I've had the same <laughs> issue I, when I try to game on mine. Uh, it doesn't quite work out. Mm. Uh, uh, RX Chaser, we'll 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 have a discussion. Uh, so that's a that's a build, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can I, can one of y'all build the barley corn for me? Oh, that man. is a. Uh, we'll talk. I, we can if we don't. We know people that will. <laughs> it's so. an intense one. I don't know. I like. Props to you, Courtney, for for tackling the discipline live on stream i would be like way too anxious to tackle a full-on through hole build like i already feel like i have to do research at half of the the boards that i that i end up building because i'm like i don't want to fuck this up in the middle of a live stream and look like a complete idiot um okay well so i'm like i guess bad behind the scenes information about that is i i tried to practice on a mysterium and I kind of messed up the PCB for it because it, that was my first, not my first through hole build. Like I have a macro pad, but that's like way different, right? So I was trying to build the Mysterium and I kind of, kind of messed that one up. So when we do the discipline one, it'll be take two and hopefully it'll go better. But you know, it's, it's still going to be difficult. <laughs> you just got to take your time. I mean, I was, I was, I kind of, I literally stood up and just started like yelling whenever it like when i plugged it in it worked i was like yeah fuck yeah <laughs> like, it didn't blow yeah. up oh my god <laughs> like, got it to work um so I, I think but then of course it's like but i did that off stream <laughs> yeah that's what like, i'm saying it's like i could i know that i can definitely get it done but it's more of like the the anxiety of doing it on stream and then like you mess up like we've all had those moments when you're on stream and something like doesn't work quite, quite right and you're like in your head, you're like, shit, 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 shit. This isn't working. This isn't going to work. This isn't going to work. And I have no clue what's going on. And then like chat's trying to like run you through what the possible <laughs> solutions are. And then you're just like sitting there for like 30 minutes trying to figure out what the hell's going on. That's um, like one tiny thing. <laughs> yeah. Like for me with the freaking uh, TGR 910 I built where it was like, I couldn't figure out why a row wasn't working. And it was because of the uh the stab washers it needed stab washers and i'm like mm -hmm. come on man yeah. how'd you diagnose that yourself that'd be hard yeah uh, rx chaser um i mean buy with confidence we'll get it built we'll get it built May the whole thing might not be on stream <laughs> there's no mistakes it's called throwing for content yeah <laughs> <laughs> i love it so but uh, yeah it's I'm excited because like Keeb Noob and uh, so Keeb Noob and Didi Decline are doing a barley corn race, <gasps> and I'm excited to watch that because I'm excited like to do the check-ins. Right, I don't know if I'll sit there and watch the whole thing, but I'm excited to do like the hour check-ins. Like, how we doing? And <laughs> just see like the happiness and light in their eyes just fade <laughs> into like I this was a terrible idea five hours in <laughs> those haven't set a date yet but boards have been purchased i love it oh dear it's gonna be must watch twitch stream and it's not tv but must watch twitch streams that, that competitive day. mechanical keyboards dude oh, these yeah. are the hmm. moments when i hate that squad streaming isn't a thing for non-partners yeah on twitch oh i didn't know that actually squad streaming is great like it's really cool and it would be really cool to do things like that like if you did build offs just like mm -hmm. be able to watch both of them or like we've done it a couple times where we do like a dual build stream where it's like we're both streaming so it'd be like us and you we'll be in a discord call talking and but we're also both streaming so it's like you have someone else there you can talk about different things you can both interact with questions that are happening in each other's chats like having squad stream would be awesome to be able to have viewers quickly go between each stream. Um, 
without having to use something like multi twitch that takes you off the platform. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, well, we typically like to end with uh, two questions. Okay. Um, so Cyrus will ask you one that was kind of asked, but maybe not in its entirely. And then we have a more uh, goofy one towards the end. So Cyrus. Right, yeah. yeah. So what is your favorite and least favorite thing about the community right now? Hmm. I think my least favorite thing about the community is I think um uh like this desire for like validation and like what I mean by that is that mechanical keyboard hobby is quite an, like it's notorious for being an expensive hobby right and uh I think I think because it's so expensive people feel like they need to have have confidence that they've made the right choice for like for the amount of money they're spending and I feel like there's like this um, insistence on like, um, I don't know, like defending like my purchase or like making sure that my purchase is validated. And, and therefore there's some toxicity that gets bred because of that. Um, so that's my least favorite thing about the community. Um, and I think my favorite thing about the community is just like how I guess everyone just like supports each other. Like literally every keyboard stream that I go into at the end, we're like, we're going to go raid someone else. We're going to go raid another keyboard streamer. Like there have been times where I I leave open a stream in the morning and at the end of the day, like I've gone through like four or five different people who have just passed the raid on. And I think that's wonderful. Honestly, I have never like, I've been in like content creation for, you know, many years. I've been on Twitch for a long time and I have never, ever seeing a community that is willing to do that. And I, that that's my favorite part. Hell yeah. The last question is the office or parks and rec. Oh, you guys are going to hate me because I haven't yep. seen either. Yeah. I haven't seen either. I, okay. The I've seen time that someone said that. On. <laughs> oh man. Okay. I've seen a little bit of the office, like, like enough to understand the memes. But I, I haven't, I really have. I'm just not like a sitcom kind of person, I think. Um, I, I was talking about this earlier too. Like, I'm not a movie person. I'm, I'm like very much into like animated media and that's about it. Okay. So, uh, so don't kill me, please. Yeah, you definitely, you like Streaking Bison says, you've got some TV homework to do now. You gotta, you gotta yeah. watch uh, some Okay, but which one? Or do I just watch a little bit of both? Just Little start bit. on season two of both. Yeah. Okay, season two. Parks and Rec. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, there dear. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, thank you very, very much. Um, quick reminder, guys. Go into our Discord. It's called Keyboard of the Week. Uh, vote. And this is to get us down to 16. So go to the Discord. Vote. You can vote for as many boards as you would like. Um we're trying to get this down to 16 so that we can start our tournament that starts next week. Uh, we'll announce the winners later this week. Um, so, but Stray Chroma, thank you for spending some time with us today. I know we had, we're a little weary, right? It's like, <laughs> you were, you sent me a message earlier. You're like, this is the one day I don't have internet right now. <laughs> yeah. I was freaked out. I'm glad, I'm glad that it worked out and I'm glad to be here. And you guys are great conversationalists and like you guys have, like a really awesome like podcast going here and I, i'm just still honored a little lot less nervous now but still honored to be here and i, I appreciate the opportunity absolutely and what's what's coming up next for you like when are you streaming next what are you doing uh so my stream schedule is i stream every tuesday and thursday at 1 p.m pst oh my goodness what's happening here and uh, so my next stream will be tomorrow at one uh, at, at one like my usual time and uh this month, uh, in terms of keyboard content, like in the holiday seasons coming up, uh, I'm going to be doing a giveaway in the week the week of Christmas. The 22nd is when I'm going to be doing a keyboard giveaway. Uh, and yeah, that's that's basically it for me. I'm just going to be here every every day that starts with a T. <laughs> there it is. Easy, easy to remember. Mm-hmm. I like it. Absolutely. And chat, go check her out. Twitch.tv slash Stray Chroma. Give her a follow. And check her out tomorrow at 1 p.m. PST. And speaking about what's next, Chewy, what are you doing on Saturday? I'm building the, a, ooh, I don't know if, let me, hold on. Give me one second. <laughs> oh. uh, 
Abaca Daniels in the middle of a uh, in the middle of a fight in Assassin's Creed, so I didn't want to interrupt. But we got this stacked acrylic rainbow. Yo, that's clean. <laughs> this rainbow. Yo, that's so nice. Little unicorn on the back. So I'm building this with holy pandas that I will be lubing tomorrow. Um, I'll be building this on Saturday, 2 p.m. Uh, so it should be a good time. I think this. I think it's gonna sound really freaking good. Like I think the acrylic boards already sound good, plus holy pandas. So uh, that'll be like I said, Saturday, 2 p.m. Uh, come check it out. Should be a good, fun time. What is the plate on that? This is brass. brass. So just just went with standard brass, but holy panda and a brass plate. This is kind of the standard 65% layout. Um, so should be a good time. Absolutely. All right. Who are we going to raid? Is there anyone that you would like to raid? Straight oh, uh, let's see who is on right now. Um, oh, that's you guys. Hello, it's Pex on deck. Oh. Um, I'm not sure I recognize people at this hour. Like I said, like I'm not usually up this late. <laughs> so um, next week, guys, we're gonna uh, we'll we'll probably have, we'll have a topic like we usually do, but then we'll we'll have a lot of time. To, next Tuesday will be the you know that's the the first sixteen boards, so we'll spend a lot of time doing that. Uh, the topic will most likely be light. Um, so. Uh, and then after that, we actually will have Aunt Mr. Andy Wynn is coming on uh, next Wednesday. So that'll be a fun conversation with him. Okay. Ooh. Ooh, Minterly is on. Yeah, we haven't we haven't rated Minterly in a hot minute. Yeah, one of my one of my keyboard inspirations. We'll rate Minterly. It's been a minute. Um, yeah, it's funny. It's, it's crazy to see Minterly where she's at now. Versus where, you know, she started with Bliss and then coming on on here and talking about it. And yeah, that was it, it's funny to see the glow up of mentally in her Twitch journey. Yeah, absolutely. So, guys, thank you, Miss Straycoma. Thank you very much. Uh, you guys, check her out on uh, twitch.tv slash Straycoma. Uh, check us out Saturday, 2 p.m. for the build and. Buy a switch tester. <laughs>